Hi everyone. Um, welcome to the Multi Faith Celebration, Gang Foundation Multi Faith Celebration. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we've got some problems online with people joining by Zoom, but I'm recording, which is good news. So we'll post it on our YouTube channel via our website um, once once uh, we finish today. Um, if people who are uh, contributing could be mindful of just being within the camera. Uh, site and near the microphone, um, that will mean the recording is of a good quality and you can post it online, especially as given that we've got problems with people doing this uh, remotely now. Um, so yeah, thanks so much again for coming to all of you. Um, and particular thanks to Golders Green Unitarian Church for hosting us. Um, Reverend Fergus has launched an appeal Gaza, which you will talk a bit about. At the time, at the end of this, or during this um, event, I might read a really excellent um, statement by the Quakers about the current tragedy in the Middle East. Um, it's quite a long thing, but let's see how we go. It's so well worth seeing. Um, and the Gandhi Foundation can sign up to it. We're also launching an appeal for the Gandhi. Schweitzer appeal for Gaza, which again is an initiative of uh, Reverend Fergus. So, uh, but he's speaking later on, and I'll introduce him. But can I first of all invite Reverend Michael to come up to the to the stage and, and say a few words of welcome, and then she will hand over to the London Music Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, friends, and good afternoon. Um, it's for those of you who don't know me, I'm Reverend Michael Allured, and I'm the Minister with Golders Green, um, this congregation, this humanitarian community. It's a pleasure to, um, on behalf of Golders Green Humanitarians, invite you back for another annual event. Um, and it's lovely to see so many familiar faces. And the theme for this, this, this afternoon's event, there is no way to peace. Peace is the way. It's a theme that is not an easy me message to convey in today's world, which is, if we follow the news, full of retaliation and revenge talk. And so it seems appropriate that we perhaps take a moment this afternoon to remind politicians across the world of what Gandhi said when he observed that an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. So friends, may this be an afternoon to renew our spirits and allow our hearts to remain open. And welcome to anyone who is on. Thank you. So I hand over now to our friends from the Peace for Going.
Thank you so much to the London Peace Pagoda. Every year they grace uh, our events with their presence, and it's so wonderful. Um, can I invite Reverend Fergus now up to the stage to talk about reflections on the inspiration of Mahatma Gandhi on peace? Thanks, Reverend. Um, dear friends, it's always a privilege to be asked to speak to you at this very special Gandhi Foundation Martin Faith commemoration of Mahatma Gandhi's life and peace witness. You may be called at our 2022 event. I pay tribute to two other great inspirational prophets of peace and nonviolence who followed in Gandhi's noble path, Thich Nhat Hanh and Desmond Tutu. Within weeks of our gathering in 2022, the war in Ukraine broke out. And we saw, clearly saw the striking relevance of the peace testimony of Mahatma Gandhi, Thich Khan, and Desmond Tutu. And, and of course, the great Dalai Lama is an inspiration to so many of us. Fortified by Gandhi's noble example and the wisdom of his teaching of Ahimsa, harmlessness, and non violent resistance to the evil of war, we have sought not only to maintain Gandhi's peace witness, but also respond to the Red Cross emergency appeals for the victims of war. At our multi faith gathering last year, we launched the British Red Cross. Gandhi Tolstoy Peace and Hill, and that's what it's called now. 
and Dane still and I were able to go to the British Red Cross offices with checks of over 500, in fact, with actually well over 1,000, for the Red Cross Ukraine crisis appeal. A year later, so many more Ukrainian and Russian lives have been lost, civilians gravely injured, and more devastation caused. That Red Cross appeal, sadly, has, has, is still running. Sadly, at our 2024 gathering here, as the war in Ukraine is still raging, we're now witnessing another tragic and destructive war, this time in Gaza. The Gandhi Foundation has responded with equal generosity by agreeing to hold a, a collection today for the charity Medical Aid for Palestinians, which will be launching at this event the Gandhi Reitzer Gaza Emergency Appeal and responding to the suffering in Gaza in a practical way by donating funds to this urgent life saving appeal. In doing so, we honor two truly noble exemplars. Mahatma Gandhi himself, and Dr. Albert Schweitzer, a doctor like Dr. Sargon Mandi, what noble, noble profession could there be, and an outstanding humanitarian whose life and teachings centered on reverence for life. And they, like Gandhi, inspired so many millions of people ever since, Gandhi and Schweitzer. I wish to take this opportunity to access my own warmest thanks in particular to Mark Hoda, Jane Still, George Paxson, and all other Gandhi Foundation friends for your generous and encouraging response to our humanitarian appeals for the victims of war. Most recently, as I say, those in Ukraine and Gaza, they're happening right now, people being killed right now. Dear friends, we're all inspired by the life and example of Mahatma Gandhi. Another source of wisdom for so many Gandhians and other peacemakers is truly the Quaker peace witness. That's been going for over 300 years. Fittingly, I end with words from that long enduring Quaker tradition of nonviolence. These are Quaker words. Peacemaking does not mean passivity. It is the act of interrupting injustice without mirroring, mirroring injustice. It is the act of disarming evil without destroying the evildoer. It is the act of finding a third way that is neither fight nor flight, but the careful, arduous pursuit of reconciliation and justice. It is about a revolution of love that is big enough to set both the oppressed and the oppressors free. That surely is what Nelson Mandela did, and that's what Mahatma Gandhi did in his noble peace witness. Do these words not resonate with all of us here? As Gandhians, may we act in their spirit, that of the Mahatma himself, in our engaged peacemaking in the world. I did not take up the full 10 minutes, Mark. Without <laughs> time for others. I, I hope you will still read that quite statement because it's very informational. We remember Fergus always um, always thinking of uh, a wider context. So he's given us some time back. So I pledge to read the excellent Quaker statement. Uh, thank you very much, Fergus. So I think Felix is going to come to the stage now and play Park on the violin for us. Thank you so much, Felix, who's come all the way from Wales today. As he always does every year, he's been on the bus. On the bus. On the bus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Park. Lovely to see you. Lovely to be here again and see you all. Um, I'm going to play the first and third movements of our second party center, so we Alamand and Asalband. I don't know how close to stand to this. 
Enjoy. I, I used to say to some of my Indian students, um, the first movement, it's quite like the movement of water, starting in mountains and moving in streams, but always changing. So please enjoy. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you so much for being a talent for the so beautiful and free to be played again later, which is um which is wonderful. Um I can now invite I think Dennis to the stage to read us a poem, Dennis. Three poems, not one. That's why they are just getting some <laughs> <laughs> There are handouts of the poem, I think. Is that right, Dennis? So, I think so. Oh, yeah, so, so, people might have this. If, if you don't, there's copies either at the front or the back or both. Dennis, if you would you be happy to come to the mic? Oh, okay. Okay. Mm 
Thank you so much, Dennis. Lovely poems. Um, I think before I call uh, Sarah to the stage, I might read a uh, statement from the Quakers to placate the Reverend Fergus. Um, no, it's my pleasure to read it. Pleasure is maybe not the right word, but it's a very powerful statement. And um, in recent years, obviously, we've had different focuses for the multi faith, given the sort of geopolitical situation. And we had a fundraiser for Ukraine, as Reverend Fergus said. So I'm sure that tragedy in the Middle East is at the forefront of our minds this year. Um, so let me read the Quakers' um, statement regarding uh, the ICJ ruling uh, that was brought by South Africa. And the headline is, UK must take urgent action after ICJ genocide ruling, Quakers say. Quakers have welcomed with a heavy heart the ruling by the International Court of Justice that there is a plausible risk Israel is committing genocide against Palestinians in Gaza. The ICJ, the UN's highest court, did not call on Israel to immediately suspend its military campaign, but it stated unequivocally that Israel must stop killing Palestinian civilians with immediate effect. The British government, alongside other signatories to the Genocide Convention, is legally bound to ensure that measures ordered by the court are taken immediately. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak must now suspend all arms sales and military support to Israel immediately, quite said in a statement or risk complicity in genocidal acts. In their interim ruling on the case brought by South Africa, charging Israel with the same crime of genocide, the ICJ also stated that it is gravely concerned about the fate of Israeli hostages. Quakers in Britain has jo have joined its call for their immediate and unconditional release. Israel must, not, must let more humanitarian aid into Gaza or risk a serious, serious violation of the Genocide Convention the ICJ ruled. You, you, the UK must reinstate the funding to UNRWA immediately. That's the um, UN um, Palestinian Relief Agency. Quakers in Britain have called on the UK government to immediately reverse its decision to temporarily pause uh, all funding to UNRWA 
the, U the UN agency provided urgent humanitarian assistance in Gaza. This decision followed the dismissal of 12 UNRWA staff accused of involvement in the 7th October attacks. But Quaker said it could once again put the UK at serious risk of complicity in genocidal acts. UNRWA chief Philippe Lazzarini said, our humanitarian operation on which 2 million people depend as a lifeline in Gaza is collapsing. He continued, I am shocked such decisions are taken based on alleged behavior of a few individuals. And as the war continues, needs are deepening and famine looms. As the formal colonial power in the Holy Land, the UK bears particular responsibility for the decades long violence between Israelis and Palestinians, Quakers said. This ruling makes clear that UK action since 7th October in support of the Israeli military campaign now put the British government at risk of complicity in genocidal acts. Over 26,000 Palestinians, including 11,000 children and 1,200 Israelis, including 36 children have been killed since the Hamas attacks of 7th of October. Quakers in Britain continue to call for an immediate ceasefire and release of all hostages. The devastation of human life in Gaza that we are all witnessing live on our TV and phone screens day after day goes against our fundamental Quaker belief that every life is sacred, they said. That's a very powerful statement. So thank you to Fergus for uh, bringing that to our attention. So Sarah, please. Uh, we're going to start with the, the target of one and from what's uh, being interpreted to the government of the land, they were at the time that they were in a very huge interesting panel, were able to come together and there was a wonderful exchange of poetry and religious philosophical things and the exchange of music and ideas. Um, so this is already going to continue on the song part of the European Union's part of the last few years, which is the Nightingale, and it's the and the Nightingale a singing of love and the pain of love in this. Uh, and, and, and it was a big because of this mixing. Um, there is also a Jewish prayer to the same tune, which we're going to start. With. Um, and, um, and we can start with that and we will end with um, a verse again in the particular issue, which is a security.
Thank you so much to Sarah and friends. That, that was really useful. Um, we're so blessed today with all this wonderful music and song and poetry. It's really, really wonderful. Um, I think we are going to invite Michael to the stage for a prayer for peace. Thank you. Seems appropriate this afternoon that I should choose a ref some reflective words, prayerful words from Gandhi himself. These words are in the Unitarian hymn book with readings, and this reading is it is possible to live in peace. If someone with courage and vision can rise to lead in non-violent action, the winter of despair can, in a twinkling of an eye, be turned into a summer of hope. It is possible to live in peace. Nonviolence is not a garment to put on or off a will. Its seat is in the heart, and it must be an inseparable part of our being. 
it is possible to live in peace. Nonviolence, which is a quality of the heart, cannot come by an appeal to the brain. It is a plant of slow growth, growing imperceptibly but surely. It is possible to live in peace. If a single person achieves the highest kind of love, it will be sufficient to neutralize the hate of the millions. It is possible to live in peace. If we aim to reach if we are to reach real peace in this world, and if we are to carry on a real war against war, we shall have to begin with the children. It is possible to live in peace. The future depends on what? we do with the present. It is possible to live in peace. Words of the Mahatma Gandhi on this afternoon of celebration of his life. Thank you so much, Reverend Michael. And on that note, I was uh, invited by the Indian High Commission to the Gandhi Statue in Parliament on the 30th of January, the Anna, uh, the Anna this week, um, to mark the assassination of Gandhi. And there was like 12 parliamentarians there and dozens of other people from the community, you know, community leaders. And it just, it struck, and high commissioners and deputy high commissioners, and it just struck me how Gandhi has so much power still. Which is which is wonderful, even though we, we live through times when we think his life and message have been completely forgotten. Um, I'd like to invite I think Sarah again to come up and tell us about uh, Aramaic Lord of the Square. Um, so this next piece, which is uh, a beautiful shrine, I think, which is the um, uh, a version of the Lord's Prayer sung by the Orthodox Christians in the Middle East, which is in Aramaic. Um, but um, one of the things growing up as a Muslim in the Jewish area of Goldstein and I'm going to a Christian school, I was at work and my mother actually being born near Bogotá, which is a, you know, a, such an important place of this pilgrimage, I've always been very aware of the Commonality of, of religions, and I was very uh, excited to discover this program, um, which is actually based uh, um, largely on the Jewish path, on the Talmud, um, taught to Jesus the Jew, um, which, which Jesus then taught and became a Christian faith, and it's very similar to the Al Fatiha, which is the, the central prayer in the Muslim faith. So I thought that would be um, the most interesting thing to do. So we created an emoji for it. We start with a, a traditional folk version of the tune of the emoji. Thank <laughs> you. 
to say here, I was introduced to the church by my mother, who was the GB through the ministry for no here, and he really, uh, well, I had to spend many years actually doing interfaith readings here, um, talking about commonality, talking about the divisions of the faith, I was also uh, passionately um, committed to trying to raise awareness and um, do whatever she could for help uh, in the Middle East. Um, and she was a very close friend of Dennis um, um, and studied poetry and um, had published a couple of poetry books. And one of her second books, which is called um, What Are We Keeping Out, um, has many poems um, of, a, of a meditation of uh, nature, um, but also things that um, uh, refer to political conflict. And, um, and she wrote a number of, so this was in 2013. Um, she wrote a number of poems in the latest to the women in Iraq. And I thought I would share a couple of these um, um, before inviting Anna to uh, read a new poem that she's written. So this first is called Homo. Precious land bequeathed to the children of Abraham, as numerous as desert sand. Jews, Gentiles, Arab seamen, stars of one constellation. Years of wandering, yearning, plagues, counterplagues, settling in camps, stuff of tribal warfare. Claimants of Judea and Samaria now settled on the West Bank mountain tops, watching the lives and livelihoods of people below, cushioned between income, security layers, protected by the snake of a wall, separating Palestinians, their camps and villages, some refugees for generations, some imprisoned in their lives, cut into pieces. Cut off from the world. The noose is choking farms, <coughs> villages, livestock, days of curfews, barricades, checkpoints, control over water and land, economy and future, below to infrastructure, shopping system. Defiance of occupation, military incursions, form and rage, survival in death and martyrdom. Arbitrary assassination, house demolition, telephone bombing, continue the cycle. With every slab of the concrete wall, with every loop of barbed wire, the holy land is turning into a monument of prison, where those who shut others out are also put in.
And the next one, um, that I'm going to read, um, is called Tears Have No Boundary. The tenacity of sapless branches, entangled mess of rambles and creepers, spring hummers and rainforest. This incredible resistance from the spindliest of vines clinging to every sheet or form. No amount of pruning will aid extinction or diminish the upsurge thirst for life. Walled islands starve the economic viability of crystal crops within check points and barricades. With expulsion, demolition, annihilation by degree, bulldozing, crumbled homes and groves, a pathway wall devoured the impossible land of livelihood. And yielding resistance is in self determination. Unilateral disengagement under military rule, control over upper crossing, access to the free world without freedom of movement and goods. Bombs, rockets, blood, and smoke, pungent no trust, security culture, quivering value of bare knee feet. Eyes, ears, blocked. In the wilderness of petrified rage, crystallized hate is plentiful as sand. Tears have no boundary, pain no passport. The cutting edge declaration, despair etched on the auditorium. Couldn't forgiveness enter? Let compassion fill up dry stream. Let love flow in the fountain of pain. Couldn't spring return to the desert of indifference. Let humanity bloom in the oasis of peace. Um, now I want to invite our youngest speaker, who um, um, is Rachel Porter, and was listening in on our rehearsal, and said we'd do this thing about peace, and she spontaneously started writing a poem. And so I was like, wow, finish it, and let's do it. Over to Anna, Anna and Lara. Peace is the path to freedom, and freedom is the path to love. Amen. Peace is the bridge to the city of good memories. Without it, all memories would be bad. Life is kept in good memories, or the world would be dead, cold, lifeless. All creatures would be extinct. Peace is a bridge for the land. Full of adventure, comfort, and care. You are full of peace. You are one of the stone who built the bridge and sold it. You are the peace. is a key to a home, a simple, or just one single happy. Without it, you can't defend your environment, to your school, to your work to your home, to your family, and to your life. We are going to be the heroes of this thing. We are going to be the people who, people who save peace and save the way of life, save all living things on our planet. So let's save peace and make earth good. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Anna, for that beautiful poem. And thank you so much to Sarah. That, I mean, I think those poems were written by one some years ago, but it feels like it's mixed today from you know the content, really. So it just shows you how long this terrible situation has been going on. Um, I'm now really grateful uh, to Krishna Bhakta, uh, who's joined us um, as his wife can't be here today, but he is going to read a Jane prayer that she was going to read online for us, but he's here in the flesh to do it. Um, yeah, you can, um, we can't get hold of Ashley, so it's over to you, Krishna, please, to do it. Um, I don't think people could join online, but we're recording this, so. Okay, world peace. world peace, okay. You can introduce it, great. Thank you so much. Um, I must say, um, I am from a city in Gujarat, West India, for transport, where Gandhiji actually studied which was known as Alfred High School, and the uh, exhibition in that school now. So he was a man, human being, like me and everybody. But through his open-mindedness, he learned throughout his life. And if you just see the basic principle, like love for Christ and non-violence from Buddha and obviously he believed that there is no superhuman like Buddhism. This is nature and we are part of nature. So one of the uh, philosopher Shankara Chaya in India said that the problem comes with duality, you and me, and we are different of opinion, and there is no interview. But there is only one notion. So the whole cosmos is one, we are part of it. If we think we are part of it, then we should have a problem, but we don't. So uh, I'm going to play an ancient Vedic Shanti Mantra, peace mantra. Uh, let me just. Let me explain first. It says peace in the sky, peace in the space. Earth and sky, between earth and sky. Peace in the water, peace in the trees. Peace is in gods, residing over various elements of nature. Peace everywhere. May you be established in that peace and make your life fulfilled. That's the meaning. Oh. Oh, 
One more thing is, is easy to say, yes, we should all have a shanti. Ah. We prepare for conflict. We spend a lot of money on conflict. And we prepare soldiers. Do we prepare soldiers for peace? That's what we need. Ultimately, uh, one has to negotiate in situation like war. And why can't we do it in the first place? It's just because of the duality and difference of opinion, mine and yours. We have come across lately with the organization in USA. And Michael, his name is Michael. And that's what they are doing. They, they have courses on non-violence. Actually, violence and non-violence, non-violence is not the best way to explain Gandhiji's Ahimsa. Ahimsa means violence and non-violence is Ahimsa. Ahimsa is not easy, but you can learn. The question is, how do one achieve? And Michael had gone through this course and he said that there are three things one has to do. One is you have to be at peace with yourself. Bodies, they come and go. The spirit is always there. When I'm not there, people might say, oh, this photograph is his photograph. So you have to have peace with yourself. And then other thing is, you have to peace with others. And then you have to have peace with the cosmos. Almighty. We are all part of it. And um, so we found that very interesting. Just yesterday, uh, there was another course here. We started this in the evening, which is very interesting. And a lot of people have known. And there are good examples about that. Uh, there was some conflict and some soldier twisted somebody's. Oh. And he was, he was in pain, so he didn't object to that. By suffering, probably you can reach to the wavelength of human being. And they or may not be able to reach his soul, his heart. And this is what Gandhi did. He could separate two things. Human being as an Englishman, Brits, but in India, or sort of people. And colonize two different things. So uh, these are the things. If we have an open mind and love, we can achieve quite a can I invite Sara up to stage again with the world's snake shanty fund? Um, and thought we put the word in the program because we thought that the mind might have been. But 
and whatever. So we will start um, if at any point anybody feels like joining in. <laughs> So we now come to uh, an interactive part of the program as we sort of um, head towards the end of today. So um, an invitation to all participants to come up who want to use you like and offer a silent prayer. And uh, while we do that, Felix will play an Indian raga for us. Thank you, Felix. <coughs> Ah, 
Thank you so much to Felix again, and thank you all for offering your prayers. Um, I think I understand. I think Richard, who is down the program, is unwell. So our, I think our closing item before we go and have refreshments together is "And for the peace in the Holy Land." That's all I get. And just to say, there is a um, little collection uh, basket here for uh, donations for the Schweitzer Gandhi appeal and that'll be here or at the front or maybe in the refreshment room at the back so if you want to make a donation thank you so much for coming um i'll just take the opportunity to say thank you to everyone for participating and yeah i'll be sarah and uh as well finish we'll, we'll head up for refreshment so thank you so much for, for coming again today and making a beautiful occasion thank you Thank you.
Just for a 